Good morning. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show, Red Pill Edition. My name is Leon Jones. And this morning, I'm going to talk about a topic. And I'm going to go into other topics within this video as well. Talk about why we black men don't have power. But before I go into that, I'm going to talk about Black Lives Matter making money off of black male dysfunction. And I'm also tied that in into the 2016 Democratic National Convention with all these mothers of African American men who were killed by white police officers and they got money as part of the settlement. So the title of this video is I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Now, for the most part, When it comes to Black Lives Matter, I know Patrice Cullors took the money that she earned and bought houses with it. First of all, when it comes to Marxism, the Marxism that's here in the United States is not yet the totalitarian type of Marxism. It's all basically deception. And what I mean by deception, the Marxism that Patrice Cullors talked about in her on her website, I do believe that is true. But she also turned that Marxism into crony capitalism. And why I'm bringing this up is when it comes to black males in this country, black men are only valued when their encounterments are with white police and Caucasian men. And I say that because you had your Freddie Grays. In fact, Black Lives Matter was founded by three black women, but funded by billionaire George Soros. And it all started from the Trayvon Martin escapade had happened nearly eight years ago. Black Lives Matter has used Freddie Gray. In fact, there was a wife of, and, and that may be Freddie Gray, in the comment section, let me know who the person was, but this was a black man that was selling cigarettes in New York, and he got choked up by the police and he perished and his wife went on some of these news shows and told the media outlet that her husband was a bum. This is what doesn't surprise me because there's money involved with the situation. You look at the gentleman that was shot in Kenosha, Wisconsin, yet he lived, but he's paralyzed. His baby mama called the cops on him. He got shot 
because the police saw a weapon. But then, what happened? The family got a settlement. And I call all these settlements a payment for doing nothing. Now, what you don't hear about is the nine-year-old boy that got shot by gangsters in Chicago when he came home from school. Now, that mother did get money as well, though. But this nine-year-old boy wasn't as publicized as the George Floyds, the Freddie Grays, the Trayvon Martins. But this mother in Chicago also got money through GoFundMe. And let me turn something else around. Bill Cosby. Although he's still living, he's in jail. And he donated a lot of money to my alma mater, Temple University. But it's funny, Temple University never gave the money back to him. The Breonna Taylor case. There was a lot of outrage about that. But the family got the money. And see, what I'm bringing up to you is that many of us who are black got emotional about the killings, but we didn't get emotional about the money. And we can go back and say no amount of money is worth the price of life. But then if we have to return the money, we're not going to return the money. And during the 2016 Democratic National Convention, when Hillary Clinton was running against Donald Trump, the victims who are African American of black men who were killed got money. So when it comes to Black Lives Matter and how the founder, Patrice Cullors, says she's a devout Marxist, and I believe she is a devout Marxist. I believe that her agenda is anti-male. It's pro-LGBTQ. It's anti-patriarchy. It's anti-nuclear family. But she took the money. And bought herself some houses. Bought herself a house. How's this? Now when you look at Black Lives Matter. Again, it was funded by George Soros, who was a billionaire. George Soros funded some of these attorney generals as well. But what I'm talking about is when it comes to life as a black male, it's only valued when it's taken by a white person or a white cop. But let me tell you something else. If you think about this, what does a black pastor do every Sunday? He collects money from black women. So in essence, what is he doing? He's deceiving black women. But are black women going to give the money back to him? Absolutely not. What did former congressman of Illinois, 
Jesse Jackson Jr. do? What did his father, Jesse Jackson, do? They did shakedowns of Toyota and Coca-Cola. Did they give the money back? No. So the reason why I'm not surprised is for this. Everything is done for the price of these charlatans to enrich themselves. They'll talk, they'll talk from a Marxist platform, but create extortion at the same time. They'll tell you capitalism is bad, but behind the scenes, they love capitalism. Bill Gates loves capitalism. George Soros loves capitalism. We're getting into black men. The reason why we are below everybody else is because we refuse to compete. We do not want to do the work. Many black men are on panels talking about the same thing every day, and that's women. Yeah, we know a number of women are fucked up. However, your pockets are fucked up when you're broke and you're spending time on all these panels and you're talking about nothing. In order to get power, you have to take it. You have to be able to compete. And too many African-American men still are living off of voting. Let me tell you something about voting. Voting doesn't mean anything. And I've said this in previous videos as African-American men. What a number of us have to do is not wait on the system. We have to get into the system so we can get people like us into the system so we're not going to jail for petty crimes. And the only way to do that is you have to participate. Now, I live here in Lafayette, Indiana, and what I'm looking to do is try to get on to the city council. If you're going to get into politics, you have to get into politics on a local level. You can get the money. The bottom line is you have to have a platform that people believe in. Politics is a very competitive business. And when we talk about education, many of us who are African Americans are going to school for bullshit majors like journalism, English. Yet you need to know some history. But in the end... Majors like anthropology, sociology, they're not going to get you anywhere because they're not useful in the market. Now, if you have listened to my other channel, The Mind of STEM, on that channel, I go through the meaning of STEM and I talk about different subjects within STEM and I tell you the opportunities within STEM. Do you think a number of African-American men come over to that channel and view it? No. Many of us, as African-American men, the number one goal to being successful is how much pussy we're getting. And you see how far that's gone with a number of men. And again, a number of men... are very emasculated. They're very upset that they can't get whipped. And when I talk about real self-improvement, real red pill, I talk about knowing what's going on in current events. Now you have a brother, I'm not going to mention his name, he was on a panel yesterday or the day before talking about the liberal media and that's what he promotes is an alternative to the conservative media. And that brother couldn't pass 
Economics 101. And he majored in journalism. But yet he'll call another brother a coon ass nigga if he doesn't believe in the left's propaganda. And you black men out there, if you are believing some of these older Negroes out here who are still talking about getting jobs, going to church, and trying to get something from the system, you're wasting time. In this day and age here, 2021, black men need to be more innovative. And a big reason why we will never become a collective is we always want to be the first one to do something. And then we have an issue if somebody agrees with us and then we pick, piggyback off of what they're saying and then we incorporate our own views in there just to solidify what that person said. Because if I agree with something that, and shout out to Brother Hardcore Tito, that Brother Hardcore Tito says, I'm going to utilize it. I'm going to mention his name. And then I'm going to put my own views in it. Because I agree with what he's saying. And see, with black men here in this space, the mistake that they've made is They've allowed women to come into their space and disinfect it. The black manosphere was set up for men to air out their issues. But it was also set up for us to come together, talk about solutions. Many of us don't have solutions. Everything that you're hearing in these panels, when it comes to women, single mothers, that's basically recycled material. Because Sergeant Willie Pete talked about that in the late 2000s. Uh, hardcore Tito has talked about it. I've talked about it. Angry Man has talked about it. Lost Crucible has talked about it. Doug Titian has talked about it. Avenue Rents and Ringo TV Raw, to name so many older YouTubers, have talked about it. But if you look at what's going on now, when it comes to black men, we're being devalued by these TV commercials. When these writers have black men wearing a dress. They're feminine. And then you have these commercials basically pushing interracial couples with black women, white men. And the white man is basically a poindexter. Now, there is a show out on, I believe it's USA Network, called She's the Boss. Well, if you look at that show, the daughter has a haircut like a man. The mother is a loudmouth boss. The lawyer is an overweight white man who lives in the house with the black woman who's supposed to be the boss. So when it comes to us as black men, we allow that propaganda to go on because we don't say anything about it. Many of us are afraid of the pushback. In fact, when it comes to black men, many of us are afraid of the work. 
Now, there are a number of us who have gone to college. But many of us who have gone to college are satisfied with the job. I know with my engineering business, quality control inspection services, I've had black men tell me that's not a real business. But I produce the same material, the same product that these white businesses had. See, when it comes to black men, we don't approve of it unless it's white. Again, many of the older black men who were from Gen X on back, they're still voting Democrat. They're still talking about voting. And then you have a number of them who are on these long panels talking about women, how much pussy they can get. But in the long run, we still don't have any power. This is why I didn't do a video about Patrice Cullors buying properties with the money that was basically given to her from George Soros. Black Lives Matter is a corporation. And see, these corporations are out here dictating to us how we should act. They're trying to control us. You look at the COVID shots. Many African Americans have gotten the COVID shot. They don't know anything about the COVID shot. But when it comes to African Americans, period, many of us are too emotional. We don't want to live in the real world. That's why when it came to the slangs of these black males, I knew it was about money. Because when that white boy, Tony Tempa, got killed by police in Dallas, nothing was heard. But to white folk, they know a number of their slime balls get killed by cops as well. And see, with white folks, they don't worship the trashy whites. We tend to put the criminal blacks over blacks that have a good education. Now, again, I say shout out to Hardcore Tito, and the funny thing about that is you have a number of individuals who will worship George Floyd and make him a martyr, and Brother Tito, who had a little bit of trouble, is being besmirched. And here on Black YouTube, many individuals don't even know what's going on with that brother. Heck, I had a little trouble in the past. But I got through it. I educated myself. But in the long run, as a black male, I gained knowledge about the court system. About the economic system. And in order to have a cohesive community, black men have to put economics first. And when it comes to politics, they need to learn more about politics. Stop voting for one party. These old heads told you to vote for one party and all you hear is racism, racism, racism. But in the end, Black-on-black black crime in these urban areas is what's doing black men in. Now, I know you hear some individuals talking about black men worshiping white women. For the most part, 85 to 80% of black men 
married black women. But a number of the black women don't want to be married. They want to be baby mamas. Why? Because it's all about the check. So what I'm saying, irresponsibility is going to get you a check. Again, you look at all of these brothers who were criminals, who either lived or perished, the victims were the ones still living. They got paid millions of dollars. Did they take the millions of dollars and give it back? No. They got a chance to furnish their lifestyles. So in the end, as African-American men, if we're going to have media, we need to talk more about getting economics, understanding STEM, and not talking about women every day. I mean, we already know what's going on with the women out here. It's already been talked about. But a number of us need to get off the plantation. Voting is not the answer to changing something. Getting into the system, hiring people who look like us, and then building businesses and hiring other brothers. Now, the problem with that is, do we trust each other? With all the jealousy and envy and emotion, it's going to be hard to do. But again, we don't have to take all of the brothers. We need to take the like-minded brothers who are independent thinkers. We need to take the like-minded brothers who are innovators, creators, because the information is out there. And we need to stop listening to individuals who have the plantation mindset, i.e., the older men and women who are on a plantation for something they fought about or fought over a long time ago that should have been satisfied, but apparently it wasn't. That's civil rights. But again, when it comes to these black pastors, they entertain black women every Sunday, and they keep the money. So in retrospect, the value of a black man gets the victims of that slain black man paid. So that black man really isn't a martyr, he's just a martyr, he's just a paycheck. Because he really isn't respected. The media will put it out there to use it as a slogan. I mean, I do believe Black Lives Matter, but the organization is funded by George Soros. The Me Too movement that was founded by a black woman was hijacked by white feminists. It's a money game out here. It's crony capitalism. But these organizations, these corporations know how to get black people to be emotional. And I've always said this, emotions basically cloud critical thinking. So, again, as African-American men, we have to put a lot of the onus on ourselves. Forget what the women are doing. Think about economics, think about politics, understand the law, and get in the STEM. And then put individuals 
who are like-minded in the positions and then have that money go to black businesses from black people who are representing or black men who are representing like-minded black men when they are in Congress, city council, county council. But in the end, when it comes to black men, you're only valued when you're basically dead because the victims who are existing didn't really care about you either. They only cared about getting paid. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. Now, if you are looking for some STEM, and this is what I'm telling black men they need to do. We make too much drama and we celebrate the drama. We celebrate the criminal, but we don't celebrate STEM. Well, you need to check out the Mind of STEM channel. And I don't have hardly anybody go to that channel, but on that channel, I give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. And you can also check me out on Blog Talk Radio. I'm going to get that back up. 215-383-5785 is the number to call in. Now, if you cannot find me on YouTube or Blog Talk Radio, you can simply check me out on Twitter, MeWe, and Parler. And I will also put my email back up. And the good thing about my channel, it is not monetized, so I'm not taking any type of donations because I want to give this information for free because information is power. And in the end, I'm going to leave you with this. Be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And again, this channel is a black male space and I'm going to keep it that way. And again, I thank you for listening to this edition of the 401 Talk Zone Radio Show. Till next time. My name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious day. God bless you. I'm out.